please rise for reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How could these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you... Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know, and we bear witness to what we have seen. But you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who has descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <coughs> This text, I was able to preach yesterday, but there's a section in the one-year lectionary that leaves, that is left out. And I added it for today, and it's that John 3.16 section. Why it was omitted, I, don't, I honestly don't know. But we have been on what I call the four-year lectionary, which we went through the entire three-year lectionary and now we're on the one-year lectionary, and so you, you can really see some of the changes and uh, differences between, between the two. One of them is this very thing. So we have all of the Holy Trinity readings, and yet it comes up short at John 3.16. So what we have in our gospel text is a kind of a disjointed conversation between Nicodemus the Pharisee and Christ. I've always found this text to be very unique because Nicodemus comes to Jesus and he says, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And then Jesus, the Son of God, answers him in a way that only Jesus, the Son of God, can. But it doesn't quite match the, the, the statement from Nicodemus. He says, surely you are from God, for you can do these signs. And yet Jesus said something that seemingly doesn't flow with the conversation. It's rather abrupt, but the abruptness points to the importance of what he has to say. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How does that line up with what Nicodemus has said? It doesn't really. And neither does Nicodemus' response to what Jesus says. Well, how can a man be born when he is old? 
Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Again, Jesus answers somewhat disjointedly. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is the Spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. What's interesting about this text in particular, or this section that seems disjointed, is Nicodemus's understanding of being born again. Particularly here in North Carolina, we've all seen the bumper sticker theology and the folks with the signs, the medians, crying out that we must be born again. And yet, it's always, for some reason, inexplicable is always for some reason disconnected from baptism. I don't know how you can read this text and have it separated from baptism. In fact, that's the very thing, isn't it? Can someone climb into the womb of their mother and be born again? I would argue that you can. However, the womb looks like a font. And in that gestation in the font, we find that the Holy Trinity is laid upon us, the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And in that gestation, we find that when we are reborn again, wet and pink and raw, sins forgiven, we find that we have been brought into the Holy Christian Church, the Ark of God Himself. So while we don't have tone of voice for Nicodemus when he says, how can a man be born when he is old? We know that, that the answer is true. You must be born again. You must be born again by water and the Spirit. Why? Because that rebirth connects us forever to John 3.16, that God so loved the world that he sent his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send him to the dead, but in order that the world might be saved through him. And so, in that womb, we find that the font is cruciform as well. That Christ himself, by every drip of blood from Calvary, the place of the skull, lands in either font or chalice. And we are given everlasting forgiveness for all who believe they have been granted eternal life for God does not send his son somewhat flippantly but sends that sends him that we would have the forgiveness of sins life and salvation and so Sunday after Holy Trinity we give thanks for Father Son and Holy Spirit that we have been brought into this world by our mother and brought into everlasting life through the font of Jesus Christ where, uh, where the watermark has been placed upon our hearts and the tree of life has been placed on our foreheads with water. Thanks be to God for in that we will forever know God and eventually understand the true mystery of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever.